Well, hi, this is Dale Larson. Uh, you're in my shop again. Uh, today we're going to talk about oval turning. I use the uh, Vicmark oval device, which uh, was designed in Germany by Mr. Vollmer. And uh, it is made in Australia by Vicmark, uh, sold in the U.S. by Woodworkers Emporium. I've had it about 11 years. Uh, I'm glad I had 30 years of turning experience on bowls before I went to it. Um, I use freehand turning uh, to turn the oval. Christian down at Woodworkers Emporium, he uses uh, all scrapers and he has platforms to hold it right at. You'll see what's called nine o'clock or point of tranquility. So when I first started doing this, I was using dry blocks of wood. And I realized really quickly that was a poor way to do it. And now I do it the same way I do my bowls. I take wet wood, uh, rough it out, and dry it, and then finish turn it. So most of the work is done with wet wood, which is much easier to turn. And if there's a flaw in the wood, you throw that chunk of wood out because nature grows a lot of wood in this area. So the process today, we're just going to turn, do a wet uh, blank of wood today. Uh, dry turning we're not going to do today because it takes about two and a half hours to finish turn an oval. And it's really boring to watch. So we're going to start out, I just want to show you a couple of finished ovals here. This is a big leaf maple. We're real lucky to have a lot of big leaf maple in this area. Uh, you can see that I've even oval turned it on the bottom. I'll show you how we remount it. One of the nice things about ovals is that you can use pieces of wood that for me would be too small to make a bowl. This is English walnut and it only had about eight inches of what we call color, heartwood. But I made a nice, oh, about 9 inch by 13 inch oval out of it. Very nice piece of wood. And so it would have made a very small bowl for me, but it made a pretty nice oval. So uh, anyway, that's the finished product when we get all done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the steps of how to make an oval. It's actually Chinese chestnut. And so all I've done is drawn, this is called a master line. You can see that master line goes all the way around this piece. And this piece is what's going to be uh, what's called a 25 offset. It's going to be four inches longer than wide. The uh, oval device can be adjusted from a 30 offset, this is all millimeters, 30 offset which would be almost five inches longer than wide down to zero. You could go round with it if you want. It wouldn't make sense. So the longer the offset, the more uh, very pointy you can get. Um, the wider, the, like if I go to a 20 offset, it's more round. And so a 20 offset is much nicer to turn than a 30 offset. It's just a little less radical wood movement. And uh, I'm gonna, the first thing we're gonna do, we just got a block of wood here about three inches thick. I'm gonna uh, put a tenon on each end and so I can grab it in the chuck. And this is my top, so I'm gonna put it towards the headstock. The tail stock up here. Lock it down. I've got my center point up here. I'm just going to put it there temporarily, bring my tool rest here, get it running fairly true. Okay. And here's where I, I don't have the point in my uh, live center, so I can make fine adjustments. If you have that point in the live center, you can't make those fine adjustments. So, where I, I start. So there, we're, we're pretty good. So, I'm going to use a a talon chuck with number three jaw. When you're putting points in, the, in there, you just put the left point in and you just kind of match up and see if the right one is there. Never put both points in, that's really dangerous. Just put one point in. So there's my line. Stop the lathe, I'm going to move the tool rest up. 
you can see how much easier wet wood turns. Do as much work as you can wet. I'm just going to see if that's roughly flat. It's pretty good. I'm going to use my little less than 90 tool here to make this a square shoulder. My chuck has profile jaws on it. It does not have dovetail jaws. So I want this shoulder to be square. Okay, good enough. See, I've, I've extended my uh, handle for my talon here. So that it, it clears the wood. So I'm just going to put this in here kind of light. I'm going to bring my tail stock up. I always use the tail stock as much as I can. It gives me more support. Now I'll tighten the talon up. All right, true up the top. Let's just see if I got it roughly flat. Now we're not quite down to true here. You could go straight in this way, then you're cutting straight into end grain. It's a little bit duller, more dull, makes your tool duller. That's not a particularly clean cut, but we don't care. It's not going to be on a finished piece. Now we're going to put our center. Again, just touching the left point. profile jaws so I'm going to have a square shoulder here. Right. Okay, on the top I use a recess because I don't want to waste another 3 8 inch of my wood. And so it's simply a way to save wood. This is going to get turned out in the end. If I turned a tenon on here I would lose another 3 8 inches of my wood. And now we're going to set up the chuck. The mobile device comes with removable uh, points on both ends. I now have the inch and a quarter eight threads on both ends of this. I also have inch uh, M33. And I have it set for this lathe now so it should just thread right on. And it, I've learned that this is, uh, uh, these threads are really snug. Alright, so we're snugged up there. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna bolt it to the bed. So this blank when I start I just made it parallel. Then I took it over to the bandsaw and I just took the dividers and rounded both ends. Uh, and the first step we're gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the oval chuck, not turn the chuck on, and draw my oval line on here. This chuck is set at 25 now, which means it's going to be 4 inches longer lengthwise than this way. And it grew, grew in the tree this way. So the first thing we're going to do is set it into the lathe. This point right here, if, if Roger moves a little bit to his left, this is point of tranquility, this point right here. So I'm going to set this chuck up that right there, the Germans use the term point of tranquility. I use nine o'clock on it because most people understand what nine o'clock is. Okay, the chuck is set at nine o'clock. My master line is going to be set at 12 and six. Use the framing square, get the master at 12 and six. I'm going to set the tool rest. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to turn the lathe on. Actually, I didn't need to close it. So I'm just going to hold the pencil right there. So there's our rough oval shape. I'm going to dance all those off.
All right, since I've got a tenon on the back, if I tried to bandsaw that, that'd be unsupported. So I've used this really expensive tool that I've made. Put that in there. Now I have a supported cut. It's much safer. Bring this down a little bit. All right, so now I'm just going to bandsaw this rough. So now you can see we've got it. We've got it roughly oval. It's just an easier starting point. That's all it is. I want to show you because it's a little bit hard to believe how this chuck works. So all I've done is mount a piece of scrap wood here. And again, you always want to make sure this clears. One of the things about oval turning is, the further from center you are, the more normal the turning. The closer to center, the more radical the turning. And you're going to see that here in a minute. So I'm going to turn this on, I'm going to use a pencil, and just show you the difference in turning as you get towards center. And there actually is no center on an oval. There is a center line, but there's no center. So out here, I'm just going to do a series of lines. And at center, it's not going around. At center, it's going straight up and down. So there, right at center, it's not going around. The wood is going straight up and down. So you can see if I went further out, the further out I get, the more normal, the more round the turning. When you get towards center, this wood is going almost straight up and down. And so this point to that point will be right at about four inches because we're set at 25 offset. And so there is no center point, there is a center line. Close enough. And now I'm going to have to lower my tool rest a little bit because I want to cut right at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock is right about where my finger is. And I'm going to go over to the chalkboard and show you why you can see 9 o'clock. When this piece of wood is on the lathe, it's being manipulated. So here's, we're going to say this is 9 o'clock, like on a on a clock here. Right here is 9 o'clock. Right here, the wood is smooth, or will be once I get it turned. It's just band sawed around. But as it manipulates this oval, it's manipulating it in this way, and it's manipulating it in this way, and actually it just keeps manipulating it. But right here, there's an X. You can see an X in the shadow. And you, I think we'll be able to see that when I go to the next step. But all turning has to be done right at this spot. Because everything else, like over here, since this is four inches longer than wide, over here the wood is four inches out of round. It's just going to be a big blur. And so one of the problems is when I'm turning a bowl, I'm normally watching up here at this horizon. I'm not looking at my tool. Here on oval turning, I have to look at my tool point because up here it's just a big blur. You can't see your profile up here. You can only see the profile right here. Right now, this is pretty normal turning on the outside. So it's pretty normal here. You can see over here we're four inches out around on this side over here. And so you just have a big blur. So one of the things, I'm going to look here and just see if we're pretty close. We're close enough. We're, we're close enough for rough wood. One of the problems, if you look at my gouge, the further I get away from the wood, my gouge is going up. I can't have that because now it's going to, the oval's going to change. I have to always be cutting at the same height. So I keep moving this in. And because I need to stay at this height right here. 
If, I, if the wood gets further away and I move up, I change the oval. And so you have to be aware that your tool has to be cutting at the same height. The outside is pretty normal turning. Uh, don't really do too much different than I would on a bowl. I'm just looking to make sure, no, it looks like we're good. We're good on our shape. Move my tool rest back up close again. Make up, oh, see it didn't clear. Don't do that, Dale. Spend your life doing this. Now what you don't want to do on a bowl or an oval is you don't want to go off this top edge because you'll chip it. So I'm going to turn my tool rest and I'm going to come in on this top edge uh, so I don't chip out my top edge. I do that on bowls, I do it on ovals. And now I'm going to simply come in, I'm going to come in on this edge so I don't break this top edge. Alright, almost. That's probably okay because it's gonna, this is with the grain, we're not quite round right there. And oh, we're not quite round here. Let's, we'll take one more cut. And now I'm gonna round this top edge so it's not square. I'm gonna do that because if you leave a square corner on a wet piece of wood, it wants to crack. So I'm just gonna very carefully try to round that corner a little bit. That's just so it's not square. A square corner wants to dry out and crack. All right, just kind of an interesting thing. It takes two revolutions of the lathe to do one revolution of the oval. Because you're converting round motion into oval motion, the surface speed where it touches your tool goes up and down twice on each revolution of the oval because the surface speed is changing as this goes around. It's not like a, a, a bowl that's round where the surface speed is the same, the pressure is the same. Here the surface speed varies twice per revolution and the pressure on your tool varies. I'm just going to get a nice smooth uh, curve on this. looked up to see if I could see the profile just out of habit. You can't see the profile there. You have to stop and look and see if you have the profile. And I'm going to take just a little bit more off right now. Alright, we're done with the outside. So that, the, that's the easy part of the oval. Here is an uh, oval I roughed out oh, what a year ago? Two years ago. And you can see I've left a big tenon in here. Uh, that's so that when, when I put this back on the lathe, I can grab it like that, and I can do the outside. So I'm going to take this over to the round lathe, and take out all the wood I can on the round lathe, and then come back and do the finish roughing out on the chuck. This is my uh, custom-built bowl lathe, was, and so I do all my finish turning. All my bowls and platters are finished turned on this lathe. So I'm just going to take out as much wood as I can round. It's just easier. If the camera can see, there's, there is, um, I'll just put a, there's the um, one circle and then. So there's, there's my wall thickness roughly.
I need to check and get my wall thickness right. So we got oh inch and a half wood, that's too much. So we're gonna take a little bit more out. The next thing I'm gonna do, and you're gonna see why this is important, I'm gonna put some color chalk right here on this tenon. You're gonna see when we go over the other lathe why that's important. Took me a while to figure that out. And I can take just a little bit more wood off. It's, I have to really resist the temptation on a bowl when I'm roughing out. I would just feel the wall thickness while it's moving. You, you clearly can't do that with it. So now all we have to do is take out the wood on the ends. And it's just a little bit easier. Again, it's just simply uh, easier. All right. Yep. So I'm going to try and show you 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock is right there. If you notice, there's a shadow above and below that point. But right at 9 o'clock, it's smooth. See that? So if you go above, it's bouncing, bouncing. Right there, it's smooth. So that's, that's 9 o'clock or a point of tranquility. And then I'm going to take my gouge because I want the point of my gouge to be right at 9 o'clock. That's pretty good. And now I just have to take out the end. You're going to see quite a bit of bouncing. The problem is you really can't ride on the bevel because 9 o'clock is literally less than a pencil line. And you just can't, it's not physically able to stay right on that line. I want to show you something else here. I, I, I put the yellow pencil mark on there. That tenon's over three inches. But now when I turn it on, you can see it's coming clear out here. But right here, people ask me, can you do hollow turning on an oval? And you could. So say you had this big of opening in your hollow form, all right? You have a three inch opening in your hollow form, but if you look right here, you have less than an inch that you could be turning through. So you could do uh, hollow turning ovals, but you would have to turn through this one less than an inch hole on a real three inch hole on the top of your uh, hollow form. And you would have to use captured bar. Now what I can't do is I can't turn past that point right there because that sets a tenon in the middle. So that's why I put the chalk on there so I can see where that tenon is. Real exciting to watch. All right, so you can see this is as far in as I can go. This point actually gets in the way. And my wall thickness, I'm not quite down to, I want to call it round. You can see this is where I'm, so I got to go a little bit, make this a little bit less. What I'm doing here is backing up the bevel so that's hitting the tenon. Right there's the tenon, and I'm kind of going in. Almost. 
So we're good down to about there. Now I need to go start about an inch in and go a little bit further. And I think we're about done with the roughing out. Yep. Good enough. All right. So then I'm gonna I'm just gonna talk briefly through the drying process. And I'll just take the chisel, knock these two points out here. I'll date it, wax the end grain, and in about a year I can go ahead and finish turn it. So I'll grab my dry bowl blank. Okay, it's now a year later. Roger came back over, it's now a year <laughs> later. We have a dry bowl blank. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, put it back on the round lathe, true up the tenon here, and then true up this tenon so they're both exactly the same tenon. Once those are trued up, come back over here, mount it in the, in the chuck just like this, completely finish turn the outside, and turn it, sand it completely all the way down. Go back over to the round lathe and take this tenon out. Come back here to the oval, turn the inside, completely finished turn the inside. Then, once it's turned there, the next thing I do is I get a piece of scrap wood, and you can, this is my reverse chuck. Everything will be done now except the bottom. And I put the scrap piece of wood on the chuck, I turn a groove in the scrap wood that exactly matches the oval. Then I use six of these ears around the outside to hold it in that groove. And I turn the bottom oval. And uh, you can, I, I always put at least one, maybe two lines in the bottom just to show that it's actually turned, but there's a slight concave here. And when I finish the first ones, my sister says, where's your button? Because I always put a button in the bottom of my ovals. And I had to think about that. So when I get done with the oval, I just go back over to the round lathe and put a little button in the bottom on the round lathe. Take the dog ears off, and the oval's done.